The motherboard is where all of the computer components connect. Your hard drive connects through the number one SATA2 controller here. Or if you have an older hard drive, it can connect to the IDE controller here. If your motherboard has SATA3 controllers and your hard drive supports SATA3, you can connect it to the number one SATA3 controller here. Your CD, DVD, or Blu-ray drives connect through one of the open SATA controllers. Or if you have an older drive, it can connect to the IDE controller. Note that current motherboards only have one IDE controller, which can support two IDE drives. There's a place for the memory sticks. The video card connects through this slot, called a PCI Express 2.0 16X slot. This motherboard also has a second PCI Express 2.0 16X slot, which we'll talk about in a moment. An add-on sound card, modem, or wireless network adapter can fit in the PCI or PCI Express 1X slots. In the future, all expansion cards will be made for PCI Express, but regular PCI slots will be available on almost all motherboards through 2011. And finally, there's a processor socket for connecting your Intel or AMD processor. Remember in the processor lesson we said that you need to buy a motherboard specifically made for either AMD or Intel processors? The socket is why. Intel and AMD processors fit into different sockets. While all of the other connections for components are the same, the processor socket is specific to either an Intel or AMD processor. Intel currently has four different CPU socket types. Socket 775, also called Socket T. Socket 1156, also called Socket H. Socket 1366, also called Socket B. And Socket 1155, also called Socket H2. There's a fifth socket type, Socket 2011, also called Socket R, that will be released later in 2011. Socket 775 is the oldest of the four. The processors for Socket 775 range from the low end to the mid range of performance and support DDR2 memory. They offer good performance for the price. Intel will not make any new CPU models for Socket 775. Socket 1156 fills the gap between the older Socket 775 and the higher performance Socket 1366, which we'll talk about in a moment. Socket 1156 supports DDR3 memory in dual channel mode. The processors for Socket 1156 range from the low end to the mid range of performance. Intel will probably not make any more CPU models for Socket 1156. Socket 1366 is a high end platform and supports DDR3 in triple channel mode. Intel will not make any new CPU models for Socket 1366. Socket 1155 is a low to middle high end platform and supports DDR3 in dual channel mode. This is Intel's latest socket and should be around for a few years. Socket 2011, which is scheduled for release in 2011, will be Intel's high end platform and supports DDR3 in quad channel mode. AMD has two different CPU socket types. Socket AM2 Plus and Socket AM3. AMD will release a third socket type, Socket AM3 Plus, later in 2011. Socket AM2 Plus supports DDR2 memory in dual channel mode. AMD is phasing out Socket AM2 Plus. Buying a Socket AM2 Plus CPU and motherboard is not recommended. Socket AM3 supports DDR3 memory in dual channel mode. Socket AM3 CPUs range from the low end to the high end of performance. AMD will begin phasing out Socket AM3 later in 2011. Socket AM3 Plus will be released in the second quarter of 2011 and will be AMD's low end to high end platform supporting DDR3 memory in dual channel mode. Socket AM3 and AM3 Plus CPUs will be supported. It's important not only to match the motherboard, memory, and processor type, 
but to also make sure the speeds of the processor and memory can be handled by the motherboard. The CPU speed and the memory speed must match the motherboard's capabilities. So when you buy the motherboard, processor, and memory, be sure they are compatible with each other. On the side of the motherboard, which faces the outside of the computer's case, we have our external inputs and outputs. There's a PS2 connection for an older keyboard or mouse, USB 2.0 ports for connecting newer mice and keyboards, digital cameras, printers, and scanners. USB 3 ports are starting to appear on the newest motherboards. USB 3 can be up to 10 times faster than USB 2. To get the speed of USB 3, both the controller on the motherboard and the device you plug into it must support USB 3. A new USB 3 cable is required as well. USB 3 controllers are backward compatible with USB 2 devices and cables. With a USB 2 device plugged into a USB 3 controller, you will get USB 2 speeds. Firewire, also known as a 1394 port for capturing video from high definition or standard definition camcorders. This motherboard has both 6 pin and 4 pin ports. An external SATA port for connecting an external hard drive or CD DVD drive. This motherboard has two. A few built in features that can also be found on add on PCI or PCI Express cards. An onboard sound card for connecting your speakers with digital inputs and outputs. An Ethernet port for connecting to a home network or high speed cable or DSL modem. This motherboard has two. Motherboards can also have a video card built in, though for video it's best to have an add-on card. There will always be better features and faster performance with add-on video cards. Let's go back to the second PCI Express 2.0 16x slot. In the video card lesson we mentioned SLI and Crossfire, which combines the power of two, three, or four video cards to give you better graphics performance. If you want to try SLI or Crossfire, You'll need a motherboard with this second, third, or fourth PCI Express 2.0 16x slot. A SLI capable motherboard will come with a custom made SLI bridge. Crossfire video cards will each come with a crossfire bridge to connect the two, three, or four cards together. Most motherboards support either SLI or crossfire, but not both though there are newer motherboards that support either SLI or Crossfire. We'll show you how to set up SLI and Crossfire in the computer setup lessons. If you're planning to overclock your computer's RAM or CPU, you might also need to overclock the motherboard. The motherboard's overclocking options are all important in your success in overclocking. Not all motherboards give the option to overclock, so look for a motherboard that will let you change the speed and timing settings. For instructions on overclocking your CPU, see the overclocking video lessons on the website. Motherboards run between $75 and $300, depending on the speed of the components they can accept and what extras are built onto the motherboard, such as better cooling, overclocking options, firewire connections, number of USB ports, and sound. When you shop for your motherboard, Make sure it's compatible with the other components you buy. Take into account the extras built into the motherboard when deciding how much to spend. If you're planning to overclock your PC, check the motherboard's overclocking options. In the installation lessons, we'll show you how to install all of the components into the computer case and connect them together to have a fully functional computer.